next half hour, you'll meet a growing group of men and women that have kept their spark of creativity. Most importantly, you'll learn new ways to use your own creative talent. Today on Art Is, we're going to Fort Walton Beach to meet artists from this area. You will first meet Judy Goodfellow, a painter from Shalimar, Florida, who specializes in indigenous birds from the Gulf Coast and landscapes of the Old South. For Judy Goodfellow, life as an artist has been a wonderful adventure filled with fantastic opportunities to show her work to the world. This past year, Judy was invited to the Festival of Masters in Walt Disney World in Orlando, one of the top 10 art shows in the country. Her painting titled Emerald Coast was also selected to hang in the Florida State Capitol. Her latest endeavor has been in conjunction with a drug awareness program called A Drug-Free America, targeted to educate kids about drug abuse. Judy was commissioned to paint several paintings of bald eagles to serve as the artwork needed for the program. What makes Judy's work so special is her ability to take a brief moment in time and capture it in her paintings. Actually, it was being home with two fairly young children back in the early 70s and wanting to do something and not knowing what. And if you want to know the honest truth, it was a simple case of, uh, I tried ceramics and wasn't any good at that. And my husband says, well, why don't you paint? I said, I don't think so. I can't even do stick people. And I need a ruler to draw a straight line. But I did go and take some drawing lessons and decided I liked it. And the first couple of paintings that I did, my husband said, hey, those are real good. We can sell them. I said, yeah, right, sure. Who's going to buy them? My first show was in Panama City in the early 1970s, and I sold almost everything I had. We laughed all the way home. I'd made $200. It was wonderful. The bird is just, it's an impression. Um, we live on, we're lucky enough to live on the water in Shalimar, and the great blue herons and the white, the white herons are magnificent, and they're in here all the time. And it was just, the sun was going down, and it was just getting dark, and one of those birds came in and landed. And this painting was done so quickly. I couldn't believe it myself. It was just one of those special paintings, that's all. And I thought, well, I'll never be able to do another bird. I always said I couldn't do humans and birds, but I tried a few more, and I just absolutely fallen in love with them. The rosy uh, spoonbill was just finished within the last few weeks. Uh, you can see the really big difference in the backgrounds. I was doing just the dark backgrounds to begin with, but there wasn't enough depth, and that's what all of this allows with the different colors. And it also allows me to bring in complement colors, which is the oranges up against the reds that are in the bird. I started working on masonite, uh, oh, heavens, it's been about 15 years now. Um, I like the smooth surface versus canvas, simply because with the canvas you're fighting that little bit of texture, and for the very detailed work, the eyes and all the feathers, the brush jumps just a little bit, and with the masonite it does not. On the hard surface it's really great. The colors are much more vibrant. The oils versus so many of the other medias, I've messed in pretty much all the medias, but I can't get the colors that I want that I can get with oils. It's that vibrancy. The acrylics, I lose a little bit of color with them and they dry too fast with me. Oils are more forgiving. I can do most anything I want with them. Yes, um, on the landscapes, uh, all my buildings do actually exist. Um, that was another fun part of my husband and I uh, being in this business. We try to take a week each winter and uh, we grab the camera and we just disappear. We've got road maps of Mississippi and Alabama and Georgia and I've marked off roads that we've been on. Those maps are pretty well full now. We've been on just about all the back roads. 
and a lot of interesting people, and we've been chased out of a few backyards. They just don't understand why I want a picture of their old barn or their old well that's out behind the house or whatever, but I found that uh, by giving them brochures and talking to them a little bit, they generally cooperate pretty well. One of our best sources has been, uh, I take a bunch of photos and pop into a post office, because after all, who knows his route better than a postman? And we've had some wonderful response from that. The main goal was to do a seascape and present it differently. And you can see the love of the wildlife. I've uh, wanted to do a seascape, but it's difficult to get everything that you need in the seascape, the water and the sea oats in the sky, and still have the birds in perspective. So this was a different way of doing it, presenting them underneath with, uh, in their own little boxes. But I didn't want them confined. They've got to be free, and that's why his wings are outside the box. And, the little water over here and his tail and that's outside the box over there. It's just very representative of what you find on the Gulf Coast, but um, a little bit differently, a different way of presenting it. The only thing I want to do with my art career, if that's what you want to call it, it's something that I love, something I enjoy doing. Um, the main place I want to go is just simply to keep on improving. When I can see a big improvement in my work, I'm happy and I've been seeing that lately. Um, locally in Destin, I am handled by the Walls, Wallflowers Gallery, which is right on Highway 98 in Destin. And also, uh, most recently, uh, they just had their grand opening, the Cathedral Gallery, which is over in um, Peach Blossom Square in Foley. When we continue, we'll take you to Holly, Florida to meet the States family.